Hey everyone, Cody here, and today I'm going to give you my second everyday lesson. Today is May 13th, the day after Mother's Day. Uh, so today's lesson is this. Stop chasing ephemeral things. Ephemeral just means things that are brief or don't last long. And essentially what I find is that a lot of times I myself and some of the people I know close to me we tend to get focused on chasing the wrong things. And when I say that, I mean things that aren't going to last or fulfill us in the long run. And so a lot of things that we chase are just really vanity type things. So fame or fortune, um, beauty, uh, sex, material goods. The problem with all of these things is that when we focus on those things and we just chase those things when we put a lot of time and energy into attaining those things they don't fulfill us or they might fulfill us for a very very short amount of time and then and then we feel empty after we've attained those things because those things are a part of life but they're not things to focus on and I'm gonna break some of those down and give you examples to kind of prove my point and then I'm gonna talk about the things that maybe we should focus on so let's talk about like fame. Okay, so Freddie Mercury, who was the singer for Queen, actually talked about how, but right before he died, he said that he felt like he was one of the loneliest people in the world. Now, this is a guy that had probably tons of friends um, and close, you know, he had his bandmates and he had, you know, people that he'd probably known for years and, you know, t thousands and thousands of fans. But this guy said that he felt lonely. And you know, he was famous, so how, was, you know, how does that work? Well, you know, when you chase that and you think that that's what you want and you have it, that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have close relationships. It just means that you have people who want, like you for a certain reason, um, but not just because you're, you're you. They like you for that specific reason that made you famous. Does that make sense? So when you chase fame, yeah, you're going to get recognition, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have close relationships with people that are that are strong relationships that fulfill you. Um, so let's talk about money. I mean, this is a huge thing, and I've had the issue of chasing money. But the problem with money is that it comes and goes, right? And it's very easy for it to come and go. You can get it very easily, and you can get rid of it very easily. But money is just... Money is just really an idea. I mean, honestly, all of the money that we have in the world, the worth of that money is only that valuable because we place the value on the money to be that value. Does that make sense? So money is really just an idea. I mean, a piece of paper, you know, well, it's really cloth, but a dollar is really just a dollar because we say it's a dollar. It's really just a piece of cloth. I mean, it's no different than if I cut a, a, a square off of one of these canvases and held it up and said it was a dollar. They're, they're the same. Technically, I bet you, actually, the canvas would probably be worth more physically than that that scrap even though the, the scrap says it's worth more because money just has the value that we give it so money is not really worth chasing now yes i think it is a good side effect of of what i'll talk about later but we should not chase money because it's fleeting it's ephemeral you even if you get it once you have it you'll either want more or it's just not going to make you happy it may solve some issues i'm not going to lie about that but it's not going to make you happy just to have money or even if it does it's going to be temporary because it's just a thing it's just just a material thing and that kind of leads me to my next thing is material things the problem with material things is that they they eventually break down and they become no good. Um, you know, take anything in your house, eventually that thing, it may still be good in 30 years, but it's not going to be as valuable or it's not going to be in the, as great a shape as it was when you first got it. Material things just wear away. And even if you have these material things, once you die, they have to go to someone else anyway. So what was the point of accumulating all these material things that you really don't need? I'm not saying that you can't have stuff. I mean, we all have stuff that we don't need, or at least a lot of Americans do, and probably in some other richer countries. But my point is that there's no point in chasing accumulating things because it's fleeting. It's 
it's not worth it. You know, I just, I used to think that I needed, you know, certain things in my house or I needed a certain car to be successful or to show people that I was a success. But I realized there's no point in that. I have a car that runs. I'm grateful for that. You know, an Addy of Gratty or Attitude of Gratitude if you watched yesterday's video. Now let's talk about two other quick things and I'll move on. One is sex, the other is beauty. There's really no point in chasing sex. Sex, I, I, I really hate that sex is oversold in the media because yes, sex is a great thing and it's a beautiful thing and it's great that you know God gave us that as, as something to share as intimacy between other people. The problem is, is that it's oversold in the media. You know, obviously you've probably heard the phrase that sex sells and that's an unfortunate truth, but why? It's something that is over in a few minutes. It, there's anticipation of the thing, but the thing is over just shortly, very quickly, even if you make it last long. I'm not gonna go into that argument. It doesn't really matter because it's fleeting. Once, once that feeling passes, and you just feel empty and then you go and chase it again and then it passes and then you chase it again and then it passes it's just a thing it's not worth chasing because you will always be chasing it just like a drug I mean if you just chase that you'll never be satisfied because it's not it's not a thing to to give you lasting happiness so don't chase that. I mean, why? Why would you? You're just going to keep chasing it and never be satisfied. Uh, so the last thing is beauty. Um, and again, these are just examples. But be beauty is fleeting. And the Bible even says that, the, that beauty is fleeting. Because, I mean, look, as great as you might look when you're younger, over time that's just going to go away. And yes, there's a lot of things you can do to kind of maintain that. But you're really just lying to yourself and you're lying to everyone else that like that you're better than the aging process but God made us finite I mean he gave us a certain amount of time on this earth for a reason I mean we're not meant to be here our entire lives I don't care what you believe about the afterlife we're not meant to be here forever we're meant we're given a certain amount of time each person to do something with that thing, which is what I'm gonna to get to in just a second. So the point of all this is stop chasing ephemeral things. Stop chasing things that aren't going to fulfill you and give you a lasting, um, a sense of satisfaction. There's no, there's no point in it. So what would I suggest that you do chase? Well, uh, there's a couple of things. The first would be meaningful work. So a lot of us are unhappy in the jobs that we work. I really like the job I'm at now, but the job I was at before this, I just was super unhappy because of the type of work that it was. And I just felt like I wasn't getting anywhere with the work that I was doing. I was doing tech support in a call center and I felt like at the end of the day, I had not accomplished anything. So it felt meaningless to me. And yes, I was talking to people and I was, you know, making people happy and stuff like that because I really cared, but I just felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. And now with this work that I'm doing, I actually feel like I'm actually doing something with my time and I enjoy it. So the work is meaningful. And I, don't, I think a lot of people, they hate their jobs and they think, oh, I got to go start my own business or I got to go, you know, I got to go do this or I got to just quit my job and stuff like that. But I'm not saying you can't quit your job. My point is, is that I think it's just that maybe you're not doing meaningful work maybe you're not doing something that is fulfilling you because you don't feel like it's making a difference in your life or someone else's life so that's what i would suggest one thing is meaningful work the second is life's purpose you know really i think every person at one point in their life kind of says what am i here for what am i on earth to to do and i think that's a great question i think that's a common question there is a great book by Rick Warren called uh, One on Earth Am I Here For, I think. There's another version of that called The Purpose Driven Life. These are um, God-centered books, so I'm just going to let you know. But the book is really good, and I've read it, and it, it opened up a lot of ideas to me. So I'm just going to throw that out there. Um, you don't have to read it, just a suggestion. But my point is, is that find a life's purpose, or at least some aspect of your life that you can kind of live out that is going to make a difference in your life 
or the life of others. And that is kind of the, the third thing I wanted to address is, you know, finding, a, finding something that can benefit others. You know, a lot of times we're so busy and so focused on ourselves that we're not thinking about the things that might help someone else. We don't spend any time, you know, volunteering somewhere, or we don't spend any time helping other people, or we don't spend any time just doing something outside of our own interests. And the, what I've found is that when I serve other people, I get a sense of a sense of fulfillment that I don't get by doing things for myself. When I when I serve other people, I feel like I'm actually making a difference. Um, you know, one time we did this this food basket giveaway at our church where we were giving people baskets of food for Thanksgiving. And I, I swear to you, I cried giving those people food because I was I felt like I was making a difference in people's lives. These people couldn't afford Thanksgiving dinner and we were giving them the whole meal to feed at least six people. And it just felt good. It felt good to to be able to contribute that to someone's life. And I would not have, I've never really felt that same kind of feeling in doing my own things for my own self. But when you, when you see the changes that, you know, doing something else for someone else can make, it just changes everything. So maybe it's that. Uh, the last thing I would say is uh, your legacy. You know, focus on how can you leave a legacy behind? You know, how can you leave some kind of mark on the world positive that is going to, that's going to live on past you. Look, once we're all dead, we're gonna be forgotten. You know, after Michael Jackson died, a few days later, everybody kind of moved on. Like for the first, I'd say probably two or three days, people were still talking about it. By about the fourth day, everybody moved on. You know, obviously that kind of thing, major events like that when people die, people talk about it for a few days, but then after about the third day, everybody's kind of moved on. There's, you know, it, it's because, once you're dead, you're dead. There's not really anything else to do. So what is some kind of legacy that you can leave that is going to make a difference, you know, in the world? How are you going to show that your existence mattered? I think every person matters, but I think a lot of times we just get caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff and we don't think about, hey, how can I leave maybe this world just a little bit better than the way that I found it? Now, I'm not saying you have to do anything major or anything like that, but just think about that. Like, what is something that you could do? Maybe just a, maybe it's something you do as a side project, a little bit every day, that kind of turns into something later on. You know, who knows? I my point is is that don't get caught up on these short term things, these ephemeral things of things that just give you instant gratification or pleasure now, but they really don't amount to anything in the end or in the future. I mean, these things that we chase, we tend to chase short-term things that just fulfill us right this second, but they mean nothing when we die. Um, I would also argue that as a thing to kind of focus on, if you're religious, then focus on getting closer to whatever it is you believe. I mean, I'm a Christian, so I would I focus on my relationship with God because that matters to me. And I know that if, if I die, and that is the eternity for me is, you know, there is an afterlife. Well, then I would probably want to know more about that, that God that I believe in so that when it gets to that point, I, you know, have some idea of that. But even if you don't, some of these ideas that I've given you to focus on, you know, things like legacy or finding meaningful work so that you're t you spend so much time at work, you may as well do something that you enjoy. It doesn't have to be your own business, but just do something that brings you some kind of joy um, or doing something for others. Like just focus on these long term things instead of these short term things, because these short term things will only bring you happiness in the short term, not in the long term. And uh, and I think that you'll find that you will be a much more fulfilled person, maybe not happy all the time, but more fulfilled, like you're actually doing something with your life. So hopefully I know this was a little long, I apologize, but I thank you for watching. Hopefully this video made some kind of sense or, or made, you know, just one point stuck out. That's all I've got. I will catch you guys in another video. Take care. Bye, guys.